If we continue to behave normally, this disease will treat us abnormally. Health Cabinet Secretary Mutahi Kagwe echoed these words at the onset of coronavirus in Kenya to urge citizens to shape up or suffer the wrath of the virus. True to his words, life has changed. The old normal is gone and the new normal of sanitation, disruption and innovation is here with us. On this episode, we focus on the new normal. Later on, we will be seeking to find out how the country is adapting and easing into that new normal. Hello there and welcome to Metropole Debrief. My name is Ndero Oganga. Sit in class. Meet Susan Daria. Susan is an educationist whose job requires her to wake up every morning and report to the University of Nairobi. However, since the country recorded its first COVID-19 case and following the government's directive urging people to work from home, this has since changed. Susan now says that her new reality has come with its fair share of challenges. Um, I'm yet to adapt to it. Yeah, it's possible if you're able to time yourself. It's possible also if you're able to control your children in the house. It would be difficult for a mother who has very young children who would be screaming and yelling in the house, but um, it's, some, it's, it's a possibility that should be pursued by most employers. Working in the house is um, a bit tricky. If you schedule your time and wake up early during the quiet times, you can implement quite an amount. Yeah, before now you embark on teaching the children, yeah, on whatever they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. However, despite the challenges, Susan says the opportunities that lie therein from working from home are endless. For employers, contrary to the belief that not much work can be done from home, she insists that the levels of productivity are in fact high. For the employees, Susan says they get to enjoy a sense of convenience. There's the convenience of uh, timing yourself. You know, you can decide to work at this hour, take a pause, work, take a pause. So you can pace your, your work. It's not always that when I clock in to work in the morning that I'm being productive. No, that's one thing employers really need to look at. Coming to work and clocking in doesn't mean I'm being productive. I could be productive and be doing it from my house. You know, it's also a bit um, cheaper when you don't have to waste man hours on the road. You know, you waste so much time going to work, so much time coming back. That's time that could have been used productively, doing something else. And for today's employee who has, is learning the art of having a second hustle, you know, we could work, if my working hours are eight hours a day, I could work eight hours a day and be able to meet my, to meet my other, the other demands of a side hustle if I have one. Yeah. And for the employer, while working from home is a circumstance that has been brought about by the fear of contracting coronavirus, Susan says it is the future. In the employment sector, working from home is going to be a policy across the nation. I think it's something employers are going to look at right now, on a serious note. It's, um, millennials have been talking about it because today's, today's um, employee, that one who's joining the, the employment sector, wants to work on a flexible time. You know, someone to work at night. There's a time we spoke about 24-hour economy, but it never really got implemented. So I think right now the employment sector is also going to look at it from that angle, that um, teachers will be able to schedule classes even in the evening for high school, you know, or for primary, and the students will learn. And I think it would be a good thing for the country also. In a move to further encourage employers to allow staff to work from home in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, President Uhuru Kenyatta has today announced a partnership between Google Loon and the Civil Aviation Authority that will improve and increase connectivity in the country. Development will also enable Telcom Kenya and Google Loon to start the commercial rollout of a 4G data network in our country. These two companies have been testing this service for the last two years. Once inaugurated, this service will extend Telcom Kenya's 4G network to areas that are not covered by any of our mobile network providers. Therefore, all Kenyans, wherever they are in our country, will enjoy access to high-speed 
and affordable internet services. With the adverse working from home still standing, many organizations are reorganizing themselves to allow room for that. Kenyans, just like Susan, are beginning to adapt and warm up to the idea of getting work done from the comfort of their homes. What is the probability that this habit will be adapted beyond the virus? That is a wait and see. For Metropole TV, Amundero Oganga. Quite an interesting piece there on Susan Darian. It's interesting to also see that she's able to get her work done from home and also teach her children from home. Let us briefly go through the scenarios of the new normal. And the first scenario that we look at is work life. Now, just like we have seen with Daria, work as we know it has changed world over. In Kenya, President Uhuru Kenyatta urged Kenyan employers to allow their employees where possible to work from home to minimize contact. World over, change has been made with relation to working from home. Now let's take a look at some of these companies. Google and Facebook told employees that many workers who can do their jobs remotely should plan to do so until 2021. Another company, Amazon, said its headquarter employees will stay at home at least until October of the year 2020. Moving on to Microsoft, it told its staff on Monday that working from home remains compulsory through October for most employees, though the company will allow some workers to voluntarily return to their offices in stages. Now, Twitter decided to give up on timelines altogether, telling most of their employees they can just work from home forever. This is so interesting. You're seeing most of these tech companies are beginning to embrace the idea of working from home, even Twitter taking the bold step and saying you can work from home forever. And this changes a lot of dynamics, office space, office hours, transport, a lot is going to shift. And research has shown that many people can be productive at home. Now, let's take a look at innovation because it's one of the areas that has also adapted to the new normal. With a big shift in life, technology has been the biggest winner in this pandemic, that is a given. Due to social distancing rules, meeting and conferences have gone online or virtual. The boom of Zoom, or as people jokingly say on the internet, death by Zoom meetings. The use of the firm's software jumped 30-fold in April as the coronavirus pandemic forced millions to work, learn, and socialize remotely. At its peak, the firm counted more than 300 million daily participants in virtual meetings, while paying customers have more than tripled. Zoom reported a revenue generation of 32.8 billion shillings in February and April quarter. For reference, this is more than double what the company earned in the same time last year, which was 12.2 billion shillings. Zoom is rather is said Zoom said rather it expects its sales as high as 180 billion shillings this year, roughly double what it forecasts in March. Now, what are some of the other tech companies that have been making it big during this pandemic? We've We've seen a boom in the use of YouTube. Many people are going there to upload content and to also look for a break in terms of content because mostly mainstream media focuses on coronavirus. So if somebody wants a break from that, they head over to YouTube. TikTok has also seen a big boom as many people are logging onto the platform for short videos and it's also a break from the reality. And we've also seen Instagram has been peaking pace and one of our guests later on has taken her journalism online and does most of her interviews on Instagram. Let's now move on to tours and travels and see how things are changing there. Kenya Airways has announced plans to resume domestic flights by 8th of July and international flights by the 14th of July 2020. The national carrier plans to commence local and regional flights which cover Mombasa, Eldoret, Kisumu, Diani, Kigali and Entebbe before embarking on long-haul international flights to Amsterdam, London, Paris, Dubai and Mumbai. However, upon resumption, the airline will reduce the frequency of long-haul flights until 24th October 2020. The revised frequency for long-haul routes is as follows. Nairobi to Amsterdam will be three times three times weekly and that's the seven eight uh 
787 8 flight Nairobi to London through Heathrow three times a week 7878 Nairobi to Dubai five times a week 7878 three times a week from September the 1st of 2020 so this will not resume immediately in Nairobi uh, Nairobi to Mumbai five times a week three times weekly from 7th of September 2020 and Pahit to Nairobi three times weekly 7878 flight now travel goes hand in hand with tourism and while the government is keen to revive the tourism sector a new set of rules will be the new normal for tourists that are seeking to come into the country now tourism cs najib balala says why it is impractical to quarantine tourists for 14 days who are coming into the country to enjoy our destination in order to land in kenya one must have covid free certification approved by who and will have to waive our rights to be monitored using technology on their whereabouts so that tracking can be easy should one have contracted the virus or confirmed to have the virus while in the country now equally domestically you might be able to travel more cheaply after cs balala called out on local hotels saying the international rates of $300 for masai game drive that's about 30000 kenyan shillings or $150 which is 15000 kenyan shillings for a room per night are exorbitant to kenyans and will not um and will rather strangle domestic tourism further so najib balala is saying if we are to activate domestic tourism remember we are about a population of over 47 million people we have to tap into that market but the rates have to be very favorable $300 can work for the international market but if you're telling a kenyan to pay 30000 shillings for a game drive how many kenyans are able to afford that and balala went on to add that the only way that domestic tourism will thrive and work for kenyans and work for the hotel and tourism industry also is when we have volumes so when many people are traveling across the country then it can be able to be cheap because hotels can cut cost and maximize where necessary. We also spoke about regional tourism, but for that to happen a lot of infrastructure needs to be put in place. So the African Union will start having conversations about air connectivity across Africa and taking out some of these barriers, for example, visa costs and the technicalities around getting a visa to be able to land in a particular country. That's tourism and travel. How about our social life? How have our social lives been affected? Now our social interaction has equally changed sporting events have resumed but players have to contend with empty stadiums and the best spectators get is following the action on a screen near them instead of visitors or a sleepover now we are opting for phone calls in place of birthdays and gifts with friends now nearly all celebrations are done virtually walk into a restaurant they are not as packed as they were before everyone is wearing a mask and you would prefer to sit outside that beer with friends on friday has turned into the couch blanket and either tv or mobile phone these are just some of the changes that we will have to adopt to until a vaccine for the virus is found tested and approved for human use however textbook economics aside after the break we seek to find out how our guests have been actually disrupted by covid-19 and how they are innovating to stay afloat amid these uncertain times so much more lined up for you after the break stay with metropolitan tv